All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining us today. My name is Hunter Willis, and we've got the feature feature here with you today. We're going to be going over the updates from October. Today's November 10th. My name is Hunter Willis. Let's go and do it. Okay, great. So first, we're going to be talking about the updates with FDO1. And then, as always, we go over the updates with Cloudability. And then we'll focus on the updates that have happened in the month of October with Target Process. And then we're going to be talking a little bit about um, FDO at reInvent. We're excited to be able to be there this year. We're Platinum Sponsors. So... Um, it's going to be a great event, too. There's a lot of really cool stuff lined up for that. So I'll go over some of the things that we've got going on there as well. Um, and do want to say that I'm not ignoring the fact that last month we did a um, a conference season series, right? So we had three, uh, three different episodes last month. We're not doing that this month. We're going back to normal where we're just doing one episode that's a roll-up of everything that's new. And uh, should also touch on, though, that some of the things you'll see in this month's episode were as uh, announced as kind of like the up-and-coming features in the last month's series. So um, it's still going to be really great, and there are still a new few things, and ex I'm excited to go over those with you today. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right. First, we start, of course, with the Apti One family of products. Um, want to touch on the fact first that um, Aptio One has had kind of a unification, right? Before we had cost transparency and IT planning, and so we've brought those two products together as a unified interface. So you don't have to go to that app launcher anymore to kind of switch between back and forth with them. There's now that left hand nav bar, so it's really easy to nav navigate through the different kinds of um, you know reports and settings um, that you have in. Aptio One, okay, on the left-hand side, and it's also a lot easier to uh, to be able to cross-navigate without losing a lot of the data and input that you've put into the uh, the application as you're doing that. So, um, really, really excited to be able to do that. Um, our CTO Scott Chancellor has shared some of that information about um, you know how that's up and coming in the uh, in the TBMC as well. So, really excited to announce that that has been launched. Now, we also have 13-period um, planning in Aptio One now. This has actually been a huge demand from our customers. Um, before we just we basically had a planning period for uh, for every month, but uh, we know that there are you know. Uh, an extra period for a lot of our customers and the way that they do their financial planning for that end of year kind of Q4 period there. So we have added a 13 period planning cycle in the application to reflect that. Um, especially, this is especially for, of course, our, our retail customers now. Um, and then as we announced in October, um, we have the introduction of Aptio BI. So we have basically a um, an experience uh, that goes across all of our products to pull reporting. It allows you to use a common data bus for everything that's going on in the Aptio suite of products to pull the data uh, from any application to generate reports as well as create dashboards that are cross application so that you can surface the right kind of data to the right people. Okay, and it's also happening in a much faster uh, in a much faster way, right? There's defensible, digestible, distributable reports in the form of trimmed dashboards that can be, you know, sent out across the organization. Um, and there's also things like being able to set thresholds for notifications, right? So for certain kinds of reports, if the numbers go too high or too low, you can get notifications on that. And you can do things like uh, for certain reports, you can have notifications go out to the stakeholders themselves as reminders that they need to go ahead and check that. And there's also some uh, task management capabilities, so like basically small project management capabilities built into the actual reporting interface itself to remind people of different tasks um, to you know analyze certain reports on a regular cadence and things like that. So definitely check that out. Um, and if you want to see a demo of that episode two and three from last month um, is available on YouTube as well that we go through that in this series. Um, there's also data link connectors for Oracle Cloud ERP that have been released. And we also have added, um, even since the release of Aptio BI, we've added and or filtering into the application as well. Um, there's also on the horizon, there's going to be an integrated project experience, uh, ex excuse me, integrated project expense planning um, coming to Aptio as well, to Aptio 1 as well. So, uh, moving on to the Cloudability product news, okay? Um, we have AWS Savings Plan recommendations, purchase recommendations for EC2 and compute savings plans, okay, to maximize the benefit of any existing reserved instances and help reduce hourly rates, okay? So, with this update in Cloudability, users can tailor recommendations to organizational preferences by analyzing usage within relevant date windows and setting minimum thresholds for saving and utilization. 
Okay, so this is a really, really big deal, um, pulling in those savings plan recommendation and the data there from uh, from AWS, but again, in a little bit more customizable and granular way um, with our own uh, recommendations that come along with that. Um, CloudAbility Shift FDOBI integration has been um, accomplished as well. So now for a CloudAbility Shift, um, you can pull CloudAbility Shift data into Aptio BI, compare that to other reports, Aptio uh, CloudAbility Shift, of course, the application allowing organizations to plan, optimize, and track their migrations to the cloud. So being able to surface some of that CapEx to OpEx data, um, watching that transition, right, as you're making that migration and being able to plan for that, as well as being able to do like a roll-up of a really comprehensive and defensible TCO for your on-premises costs and understanding when to deprecate that on-premises infrastructure as part of that plan, you can surface that kind of data in um, in Aptio BI now. Uh, CloudAbility total cost is also uh, being re released here. Um, it'll enable users to determine, manage, and understand the total cost of their cloud program while also getting accurate visibility into cost drivers and the portion of costs that their organizations, teams, departments, and services are responsible for what we're really saying here is that um, it's basically, uh, it's essentially a new uh, product release for CloudAbility. And what it's doing is it's not just surfacing information for the three major cloud platforms. It's also including um, information from ancillary products and other applications like Datadog is a big one. Um, there's several in there, though. I think there's over like a dozen or so that are included as well as the um operational costs right so you can include things like labor and other operational costs that are involved in the cloud to kind of customize that as well track and um analyze that too and then of course other cloud platforms kind of like oracle and ibm are included in that as well so it's really bringing a much more comprehensive um cost perspective and an analysis in with cloudability not just looking at aws gcp and microsoft azure so moving right along um in late October, we enhanced the CUD portfolio to include detailed information on historical savings and utilization of CUDs in GCP and the Google Cloud Platform, right? So um, it's important, it clarifies the ROI of purchasing CUDs and can point to health issues if utilization drops. Now it also brings feature parity to the portfolio pages across GCP, Azure, and AWS for cloudability. So any GCP customers or prospects um, can add those necessarily credentials to uh, their analysis of GCP to get those insights right away. So definitely check that out. Um, it's really important. It's also important to note too here that this uh, capability isn't something that was like available before and now we finally have it, right? Um, Google basically just released the ability to get this kind of more granular information out of their APIs. So we've been able to almost keep direct parity with them as they're um, releasing these enhancements, right? And it's kind of a testament to how quickly we are adapting CloudAbility to um, evolve and bring in new features as those features become available and as those things are possible coming from, um, especially the Google Cloud Platform, because right now it's being increasingly adopted by our customers and people in the industry. So want to make people aware, listen, as Google's making more of these kinds of uh, sets of data available and more of this information available via their APIs, we are including them in CloudAbility as quickly as we can, and we want to get that word out. So definitely check that out. Um, now, there's also been a lot of report performance um, improvements in CloudAbility. We've gotten that feedback from our customer. S uh, some of those reports weren't loading as maybe as quickly as they would have liked. Um, we have uh, reduced that page load time by between 70 and 80 percent. We've uh, made some structural improvements to the way that CloudAbility is pulling from those APIs. And across all of our products, um, it's worth noting, even with like FDO one CloudAbility and Target Process, um, we're really trying to make that information load on its own a lot faster so you're not having to like pull in the data from those reports, right? And that Aptio BI experience is kind of part of what we're doing with that, um, having everything be in a unified data bus so that that data can be serviced a lot quicker and you're not actually having to do those calls every time you're looking for information, right? It's, it's already in an interface that can be surfaced quickly instead of having to sit there and load it and think about it and analyze it before it's surfaced to the user. Um, CloudAbility organization right sizing preferences. Um, admins can now set preferences that tailor the recommendations for all users get for right sizing VMs, especially EC2 instances. Um, the, 
the most common request for this, right? Cloudability makes those surfaces, those recommendations for right sizing. Um, but we got the feedback that like a lot of admins just want to be able to just surface the most, <laughs> you know, the most efficient option instead of having these kind of other distractions um, when it when it comes to other options that are available. Because cloudability, of course, is not just looking at the cost. It wants to be able to surface different options for like the compute and the processing and showing you how you're actually saving um, when it comes to the choices that you have, right? So the feedback that we're getting is like, look, can we just set it so it'll just show the most efficient when it comes to cost? And you can do that now uh, when it comes to those right sizing preferences, which is really, really great. Um, always good to be able to meet the demand of our customers. And, um, you know, we've got this series right here just to let you know, hey, we're on top of it. We're trying to make it happen for you. So definitely check that out if, um, if that applies to, uh, to you. Now, we also have target process announcements here. We have integration with AppDO1. Okay, so we can now demonstrate how target process data can be sent to AppDO1 planning to build accurate labor forecasts, review budget variates, and uh, measure impact of labor capitalization. In layman's terms, it's so it's it's important to understand, right? One of the missions that we have here at AppDO is it's not just saying, hey, look, you know what? Yes, FinOps, yes, TBM. We're really pushing and, and um, maintaining our status as a thought leader in these spaces for people. But we also want um, our organizations that, that are our customers as well as partners and people that are kind of looking at us and understanding our content. Um, want to make it very clear that one of the missions that we have is to take that portfolio level of everything that's going on with Agile, right? Not just looking at individual cases and things like JIRA, right? And the individual day-to-day -day operations, but when they're crossing these landmarks, right? When different, um, uh, different milestones are reached, being able to take that kind of portfolio level information and tie it directly back to, um, you know, to the things that are going on financially with your organization so that you can tie a cost and understand how much value that work is bringing back to your, your organization. And our target process is unique in its ability to be able to show you, right, the value that the agile work that's being done in your organization is actually bringing back to the organization. So this integration with AppDO1 is essential in that. It's a huge step forward when, it's, uh, when we're talking about being able to show uh, you know, again, the value that the work being done through the Agile method is bringing to the organization. Um, now, there's also native integration with Azure DevOps, um, which is really important to understand as well. Um, especially, you know, so we've got a lot of future enhancements, um, deeper integrations that are coming on the way from that, but that data can now, um, you know, be integrated with target process and pulled in. So, um, other updates for target process. There's also ATP styling updates. Um, we've got a couple of blog posts that are really good too. Takeaways from Safe Summit. Uh, we had a lot of good interaction when it came to the Safe Summit. There um, took place last month, right before TBMC. Um, and then we've got a really good uh, blog post doing kind of an analysis of like product owner versus product manager and strategy that goes along with that. So that's the raw product updates that happened in the month of October um, here at Aptio. Really pleased to be able to bring that to you today. Um, talking about AWS reInvent, we are a platinum sponsor. So really, really proud to be able to say that we, uh, we are doing that. Uh, AWS reInvent, of course, is from November 29th to December 3rd. Um, it's going to be across multiple venues in Las Vegas. Uh, it's going to be a really, really good event for people that haven't um, attended that before. Now, there are some uh, guidelines around COVID, so I would just suggest that anybody that is interested or planning on attending, if you haven't already checked that out, definitely want to take a look at um, the requirements when it comes to COVID-19 and uh, vaccines, etc., but again, um, we will have a, um, a booth there, and, a, and we are also have a speaker there. Um, we are doing a session uh, that's going to be a dive into cloud financial management principles, and that's going to be with Eugene Kostov. That's going to be a great session. Eugene is really highly respected within our organization. Um, he is, uh, you know, he's, he's a VP of our product and engineering department, especially focused on the, the cloud side of things. And he has a ton, ex ton of experience with, um, you know, the actual, you know, FinOps and everything that goes on with that. Um, so really, really great session. Uh, we're also going to have the senior FinOps manager from Pearson there, as well as, 
uh, the head of engineering efficiency and assurance from Fidelity. And uh, Jennifer Hayes is also the uh, FinOps Foundation governance board chairperson. So really a lot of experience being packed into this one session. That's going to be on Wednesday, December 1st at 5.30 to 6.30, level four in the Venetian. Aptio's booth is also going to be in the Venetian and really happy uh, to be able to say that I am actually also going to be there. So we're going to have uh, we're going to have six demo stations. We're going to have a lot of people from product marketing. A lot of our actual PMs for our products are going to be there too. So if you have more detailed questions or want to come by and talk to us about FinOps, TBM, do some deep dives and really see how Aptio can help out uh, bringing more value to your organization and communicating that as well as um, you know that, that transparency of the operations how IT teams can bring value to the organization and how you basically can prove that the money that your organization is getting, right, is bringing value back in real ways. Um, we all love talking about this stuff, so happy to have that conversation and, of course, happy to show you in uh, more comprehensive ways how the solutions can help you do this for your organization. Now, of course, um, moving right to the end here uh, for regular product updates and to see what's going on with each individual product. Our Aptio uh, customers can log into the uh, the front door system for any of their products and go to the Aptio Help Center and check out the What's New section for any of their products to see the latest updates, get more explanations, screenshots. You can also go to the Aptio community for uh, various walkthroughs as well. And I'm pleased to say that we also have some really great uh, digital video content that's going to be added as a layer on top of all of this stuff. So stay tuned for that. It's hopefully going to be released here in the next couple of months. So I'm um, really, really excited about that too. Thanks for watching. Again, my name's Hunter Willis. This has been the feature feature, uh, the November 10th episode, roll up for everything that was new in October. And we hope to see you again next month. And please stop by and visit us at AWS reInvent if you do attend. Um, and yeah, until then, we'll see you next time.